Welcome to Zimmerman Podcast, Episode 71. Today, I'm sitting down with Whitney Emmons, a floral designer and business owner from Corinth, Mississippi. Today, Whitney is sharing how she's used quarantine to transform her business and save hundreds of dollars a month by building a stronger business. Whitney shares how my signature course, The Business Behind the Blooms, has helped calm anxiety and depression by giving her control back in her business. There is so much relief and comfort in knowing all the answers. If you've been feeling curious about this course that's focused on wedding businesses, but as Whitney says, really applies to any business, then give this episode a listen. Whitney's sharing her real, raw, unscripted experience with you today. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Welcome to the Zimmerman Podcast with your host, CEO, wedding professional, educator, and mom, Jessica Zimmerman. In just two years, Jessica went from facing bankruptcy to taking home a six-figure salary. She turned a business-saving $100,000 loan into a million-dollar empire. As a creative entrepreneur, a healthy work-life balance seems just as unattainable as a six-figure income. But Jessica Zimmerman is here to show you it's possible. With the right tools and insider tips and some hard work, your craziest dreams can become your daily routine. If you set some boundaries and commit to healthy changes, you can create a business and a life you love. So let's make your business work for you. Hi, Whitney. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, and thank you so much for inviting me on here. This is a a dream. Thank you. This is going to be fun. I'm excited. So tell us a little bit about you and your business and how you first became a Zimmerman student. Well, I'm from Corinth, Mississippi. It's a very small town. Very little goes on here. But flowers are kind of just part of like the farming community here. And I grew up a farmer's daughter. So it was kind of like, I I love to tell people the reason I got into flowers is because I like farming, but I like air conditioning. So (laughs) I like to combine it and do it in a flower shop. There you go. (laughs) However, whenever I first started getting in the idea of maybe I want to go into the flower business, I started researching because I realized I knew a lot about flowers, but I didn't know anything about the business. And just honestly, by what you promote by Pinterest, (laughs) I found you. (laughs) And from there, like, I think I followed everything on YouTube, everything that I could possibly click on that said Jessica Zimmerman, I clicked on it for a solid year or two. And then I finally was, I had originally had planned to start from the ground up just opening a brand new flower shop, but I was approached to purchase a flower shop here in Corinth. And so when I was approached, the the thought was, oh, I'm walking into a full functioning flower shop, not starting with nothing. Like I, got, I have to keep up with the pace. Right. And I, I realized that even though I had these great visions, I needed a way to, to kind of make those changes that I needed. So that's kind of where the course came along. Like I bought the shop in March and by August, which was in 2019, when the opening to enroll for business behind the blooms, I just kind of looked at my husband. I was like, you know what? I'm, we really don't have the money, but I can't afford not to buy it. So that's where it started. Wow. Yeah. Isn't it interesting? I think, you know, you and I have some similarities because I had also purchased an existing business. And I think it's funny. I think people just assume that you know exactly what to do and everything, you know, pick up right where it left off. And what some people don't realize is that a lot of people get out of business because it's not working or they sell it because it's not working or maybe you need to do some updates or something. It's not as seamless as people think it is to take over an existing business. So what for you was working and what wasn't working that made you kind of go, okay, I need, I need this program. So it is a full service florist. So it's everything from daily orders, funeral work, um, events, and then there was weddings and weddings were getting looked over. And I was like, man, that's like a huge miss. Like that's what needs to be showcased. So the very first thing I did was when I 
purchased Business Behind the Blooms, like I immediately changed everything about the way I did weddings. And it was fantastic. It wasn't until later on that I realized, oh, wow, I can do the exact same thing in the storefront that I did for the weddings. The very first thing I think that I did was the the wedding proposal. The mood board is like fan favorite. It really is like that selling point on all weddings. Like when I hand that over and they look at that picture and they see those colors and they see those three words of description, that's what stands out most. Like I, sometimes I feel like that itself, that itself was worth the entire purchase of the course because it was the most leading on making them see what I saw. It's really interesting because, you know, for me, it was, you know, years of kind of trial and error. And like I said, at the, after every single meeting going, okay, what worked? What didn't work? How can I make sure what didn't work never happens again? It really was that, like doing that after every meeting and to finally kind of come up with this system. And for me, I think what I think what BBB does for people is it it gives them the answers. And yes. when you have the answers, you feel confident. Yes. And when you're confident, you attract these great clients and you feel good about what you're proposing. And also when you know the answers, you feel more in control, like you can lead a meeting right. versus kind of going, I don't know, what do you think? What do you, you know, and putting that client in that position. And one of the things that I love the most about the course itself was the and it was something that it was almost like a light bulb moment, you know, I think I've heard you say this before, like, you know, Oprah has her aha moments, you know, like it was an aha moment for me whenever you said attract the client that you want. And it never dawned on me, oh, I get a choice in that. Right. <laughs> like, I, I get to say what I want in this. Right. It never registered. And one of the things that I do say to all of my brides now is when they see that mood board, they get so excited. And it definitely, like you said, it's a trial and error thing is I tell my brides, I was like, I I'm not here to do a copy and paste wedding. Like I don't, don't hand me a picture. and want me to do exactly that. I will give my own twist on it. I said, but I'm going to do a wedding. I want it to be so timeless that your grandchildren are going to want to re recreate, you know, grandma and grandpa's wedding. Like mm -hmm. that's the ultimate goal. And when I realized that I was going to be doing this, I was like, oh, wait, I need to, I need to catch back up on the podcast. Like, what has she been doing? <laughs> so <laughs> I started listening and I was like, oh my gosh, like all, all of these, all of these, you know, bloomers are sitting here talking about, oh, this one significant thing. And I was sitting there thinking, you know, I don't remember this, you know, yes, I love, you know, the Pinterest thing, like, yes, phenomenal. But for me, the whole course itself, what brought to me was confidence. Mm -hmm. And it's something I didn't even know I was lacking. Until I realized, oh my gosh, I can do this way easier. Like it doesn't right. have to be this hard. And it blew my mind. So when I transferred that over into the wedding part, it worked. Like it immediately, I saw instant changes. And even my employees are walking up and they're like, wow, did you see how that just, you know, did you see how fast that sold? Did you see how fast this went? And I'm like, I, I know. <laughs> That's incredible. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I get asked all the time, you know, is BBB, which is business behind the blooms, is business behind the blooms only for weddings? And it, I'm like, well, I mean, it was written by someone in the wedding industry for people in the wedding industry. But I suppose anyone could read it and, you know, take information from it and apply it to their own business in their own industry. And we've had people do that, that have, you know, they're in like a completely different industry, but they're able to read it and apply things into their own business. And I do love that because at the end of the day, it's just a story about, you know, one business and how it got turned around, you know? And yeah. so I do love that. And I think, you know, with the wedding business or any business, really, I think we can get stuck into looking around and seeing what other people are doing. And then we think we have to do that. And we forget. And I'm glad that through BBB, it reminded you that, no, that you actually don't have to do things that way. You can do things however you want to do them because you are the business owner. And I just remember when I finally realized that how freeing that was for me. I was like, because there was no one else who was doing this by appointment only wedding floral stuff. Everyone had a shop 
And I was like, I'm not going to because this is the way I want to do it. And so I think there is something really freeing about that. So I love that you brought that up. The thing that I liked most about the changes that I made is that previously, like, wedding consultations they were basically written on the same order pad that the birth date you know order pad was written on like there was nothing unique or anything that made them feel special and that bride really gets excited when I say hey um let's set up a consultation let me get a little information and I, like just listen to their stories you know sometimes they'll throw in a little you know, I got a grandpa, but you know, he's not going to be, you know, he can't do anything. Okay. Well, I can throw a boot in here for grandpa. You know, like I get to hear those stories that normally I wouldn't, if it was just a, how many boots you need, what kind of bouquet do you want? It, it's more so like it gives an opportunity to get personal at the same time, still being in control. And I, I, that's my biggest, like, yes, this is worth every little time, penny, everything, like it was worth it. But I also turned around and used that exact same method into like funeral work when people would come in. Cause I realized that you think about it, brides are emotional, like they're hot. This is something they've been really planning. And so right. all of their emotions are in it. Well, the same exact thing, unfortunately happens with funeral work and I've got to make a casket piece. Right. And I use that same method in, in my funeral work. And I will say that I've had more people come to me and say, you know, you listened to me cry or you listened and you caught him, like you caught his vision. That casket piece was perfect for my dad or my mom. And like that gives me chills. Like that makes me so happy <laughs> to see that they got heard, you know. Absolutely. And I think the beauty of that is you're able to hear the client sitting in front of you when you aren't worried about all the other things, when you know exactly how you're going to quote something, when you are confident in how you're going to price it, when you know the exact system that you are going to use, the next step, you know exactly what the next step is, you know all of that. But what makes it, because that was you know, kind of my problem at the beginning is I didn't necessarily have all of those steps in line. And so I always felt like I wasn't giving the client the best of me. You know what I mean? Because right. I was worried about these other things that I didn't necessarily have together. And once I got that system in place, it was like, yeah, now I really can just breathe and be present with this other human being in front of me and really listen. Right. And so I love that just having a simple system allows us that freedom to do what we ultimately really want to do, which is help people and do that. Running a floral business isn't always as pretty as the flowers themselves. I spent more than $100,000 educating myself and figuring out how to make this business work for me and fully support my family of five. If you're wanting to know how to not only run a profitable business, but also hear all my firsthand experiences of navigating how to deal with difficult brides, make automated systems, create proposals, set boundaries in your work, and book every bride you want, you need to check out business behind the blooms. Go to ZimmermanPodcast.com slash BBB to get more information. That's ZimmermanPodcast.com slash BBB. Let me ask you a question. So when you first got into business behind the blooms, what about it captured your attention? The very first thing that resonated with me was the honesty in it. I tell people all the time, I'm very free spirited. And so it's very hard for me to be like, I'm going to read this and capture, you know, and I'm going to do point A, point B, point C, you know, but with, with business behind the blooms, there was honesty behind it. This is why I did it this way, because this didn't work. I did the, you know, and you explained it in such a raw manner that I saw myself, you know, in it. Mm -hmm. I was like, I got this. Like, I've done that too. Or, oh, that makes so much sense. And so it made each course so simple. Like, 
I don't want to say simple as in, oh, it was so easy and I just breezed through it, but it was so simple to grasp. Like, I got that. And that's very hard for me because I'm a very like, get it and go. Like, okay, what can I do? Because I don't want to sit for very long. Like, I want to keep going. Right. But it was that itself, because I tried to take other courses before and they were never worth the money, but mm. there was never a personal testimony within it. And I think that for me was what resonated the most was the personal testimony in each step was phenomenal. Because I mean, when you explain you're from Conway, Arkansas, I mean, my mm -hmm. very first thought was, where's Conway, Arkansas? Yeah, <laughs> you know? And that's yeah. kind of what people say about Corinth, Mississippi. Right, where's exactly. It, where is that? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I just started like, I'll, you know, and it's kind of like, well, ha I'm never going to be that florist that's known because I'm from Corinth. And then I hear your story and I'm like, hold up. Now, how did she do all that <laughs> in, in Conway, Arkansas? And I was like, okay, so she had no boundaries. So that means I don't have boundaries. I can do this too. And that's, that's literally the personal testimony in each, in each little course made such an impression on me. Mm, I'm so glad that was just important. I didn't know any other way to write it, to be honest. I, I've never felt comfortable just being like, here's what you need to do. Step one, two, three, four. The only way I feel comfortable is sharing, right. you know, what I've done. And so that's what really BBB is, is it's, here's what I did that didn't work. Here's what I changed it to. And here's what works now. And so I do think that it's more enjoyable for people to go through because it doesn't feel like you're being taught to or right. talked down to or anything like that, or like you should have known this. It really is like those lessons are being taught, but in a way, like you said, where you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, I, I've done that. I see that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that worked for you. I'm going to try that. It just feels like a friendlier approach. Right. And, you know, in, in the past, like some of the people that had um, tried to, I, I was trying to follow their advice. It was, uh, it was either let the consumer take control or I take control, but there was never a pleasantry behind it. Like, I can be kind and still guide this. I can make them feel welcomed, but not make them make every single decision. Instead, I can be like, you know, I really, I, I think I see your vision. This is kind of the flowers I would go for with that. Or, oh, do you really like those colors? Okay, well, these flowers will complement those colors so well. You know, that kind of thing. And I think that makes a huge, huge difference. Absolutely. Besides the proposal part, what was another helpful part of Business Behind the Blooms for you? When it came down to, and I, <laughs> I just, I just reopened it to start over again because I love to go back and I want to reread everything. Like I want to keep absorbing it. I think it's like, to me, Business Behind the Blooms this is going to sound cliche, but it's kind of like Lord of the Rings. Like the more you watch it, the more you read it, the more little side notes you find. I love it. <laughs> so like, <laughs> you're definitely Gandalf in the story. Oh, good. <laughs> and good. So, <laughs> and Frodo's, Frodo here is trying to follow along. But what I loved about it was I started going back over, especially after, pan. you know, we're already in this pandemic. Knowing your numbers was such a like mind blower. Like, oh, holy moly. That's that's what I've been doing this whole time. Like, I really was wasting that money. Like, how did that happen? During the pandemic itself, like from March until now, I cannot even express like the changes that have happened. And it wasn't that I didn't take it in the first time. I, you know, was trying to read it and grasp everything. Like, it wasn't that. It was just I didn't. It was one of those, oh, well, it's going OK, so I'm not going to rock that boat yet. You know, like I'll get to it, but I'm not going to do it. Well, pandemic happens and nothing's going through. So it's time to make some changes. And I began to see like there were subscriptions that were left from the previous owner that I continued that was pointless. I was having a website controlled by someone that I didn't even know. I was just sending, hey, I want this posted. I took that and turned it into, oh my gosh, I can do this myself. So I 
canceled all of that. After going through all that, I realized I was saving somewhere around $300 a month on just subscriptions. Wow. That I had yeah. no idea was making such an impact. And so then when I got to reading about how you were talking, you need to have your website, you need your website, you know, Facebook's great, but you need your own website. Then I began to control my own website. And that was, that was so freeing. Like that was amazing. And I love it. And it's like, and I do Shopify, it's like 30 bucks a month that I'm like, holy moly, I wasted all that money all this time when I could have just been doing this. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. So you have all the programs. Yes. I started from beginning with it all. I love it. I love it. What in your business looks different? Like pre Zimmerman student, now you, you have all the programs you've gone through them. Like what looks different in your business life and what looks different in your personal life? How are they better? Oh, that's a good question. So in my business life, what looks different is definitely more in control, but the stress isn't as bad. And when I say isn't as bad, I suffer from anxiety and depression. So it takes very little to like stress me, but it was the control more. Like I felt like I couldn't have control. Like it was impossible to, you know, rein this in. Like, oh, I just got to keep the flow, keep the flow. But then when I started the course and I just literally started, like I said, I started with the weddings and then I realized, okay, this works with weddings. So what if I did this with my funeral work? And then the funeral work worked really well. And then I swapped over to what if I did this on the sales floor? Like what if I changed my sales floor to this method? And one of the biggest things that I learned from BBB was the simplicity of profit. Like your your example of 40, 60, you know, 40% cost, 60% profit. Well, that sounds so simple. Why did I not do that before? <laughs> right. Like, we don't know any better before. We didn't know any better. Exactly. You know, before I was sitting there, you know, going, okay, everything has to be marked up by this percentage and this has to right. be done at this and it has to sit here and this has to sell. And then when I literally reconstructed my entire sales floor into 40, 60, holy moly. You started making money. I started making money. And I didn't know what to do with myself. (laughs) Yeah. Sleeping with a Stranger is officially available everywhere books are sold in hardcover, paperback, ebook, and audiobook. Since the book's launch, I've been amazed by how it's been received. From being named a bestseller by USA Today, The Wall Street Journal, Amazon, and Barnes & Noble, to incredibly personal and touching reviews from my amazing readers, it's been such a wild journey. Here's one of my favorite reviews. I love the honesty of this book. It is real and raw and doesn't hold back, and that is why it is so mesmerizing. I could relate on so many levels, and I know it must have been so hard to write about many of these very personal and taboo topics. I couldn't put the book down. It was such an easy and enlightening read. I highly recommend this to anyone who is soul searching or just looking for some perspective. Truth is better than fiction. I can't wait to share this story with you. To get your copy, go to jessicazimmerman.com today or wherever books are sold. And to make sure you get all my upcoming book tour updates, join the newsletter list now. Let me ask you a question. If there, so we are getting ready to launch BBB again. As you know, we, we do that once a year. And so if you have had to talk to somebody who's on the fence about it, because it is a lot of money and we are in a time, you know, where money is tight, what would you say to them about the program? I would say I have been there too, and I skipped the opportunity in 2018, and I regretted it immediately, simply because it's not a program that is just a quick fix of do this, do that, and all all things will work out. Again, like I can't help it. Like the only word that comes to me is raw. Like it is so raw and in depth that immediately from the very first thing that you open, you immediately get connected to you for sure as a person, but from your business point of view. And I mean, and it doesn't just have to be for weddings. Like I would recommend this to anybody 
either, you know, in the floral business altogether. Like this, even if they didn't do weddings, they could, someone with a flower shop that only did just daily things could take what they, what is served in this, this entire course and completely flip an entire shop to become, I mean, unstoppable, honestly. And it, the money, yeah, that sounds, you see those dollar signs and you're like, ah, oh, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, which is exactly what I thought too. But I mean, from the very first course that I opened, because I chose the payments and it seemed like within the very first payment of it, I'd already made changes on my weddings that benefit enough to pay for it. So it almost paid for itself on the first month. Right. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. That is so, so good. Thank you so much for sharing your story and for just being so honest about your position and where you are right now and everything. And I'm so grateful to you for trusting me and the programs and all of that. Where can people learn more about you? Well, they can definitely contact every all all social links through my website and it is corinthflowers.com. It's my baby right now and it's definitely in its first stages and I am loving having a brand new website. And from there, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Instagram. My Pinterest is on there. I'm working on my Pinterest. Uh, I'm, that was my next step. Like check back in in a, in a few months and let's see how my Pinterest is doing. You're smart to work on that right now. You're very smart <laughs> yes. <to do> that. <laughs> yes. I'm excited about it. Um, so you can definitely find all of my, all of my information on, on CorinthFlowers.com. That is so good. Thank you so, so much. Okay. So one final question. I ask everyone this question. So if you had Oprah's money and you had to buy something totally selfish, what would you spend it on? Uh, from the first moment that I heard that question, I knew my answer and it was unlike anyone else's. However, I do love your answer. That makes genuine, have somebody fix my hair every day would be nice, but my- I just self- need to just get me ready. Like I will take a shower, but then- I just don't want to do anything else. I can check emails <laughs> during that time. Let someone else j- just get me together. I just was like, yeah, I really would like to just have that time. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love that answer. But my answer would be, and this is going back, I guess, to my farmer daughter roots, but my thing would be I would buy a ton of land and I would have the biggest, most beautiful Frisian horses around. And then I would rescue Mustangs. So I would just have a gigantic horse farm. So even Aww. though I would have tons of money, I would still find work to do. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. That's so good. Oh, what a good <laughs> answer. Thank you so much, Whitney. I really appreciate this. This has been great. This is going to be super helpful. Thank you so much. And I hope that um, if anybody is listening to this, that if nothing else that they take away from it, it is the most honest course possible. And And I thank you, honestly, Jessica, you did not have to give those raw details, but you chose to. And for me, it connected so well with me so fast because I was like, a girl from a small town can do this, really? And what am I doing? Why am I not doing okay. this? And Good. so, yes, thank you. Thank you so much for doing what you've done. You are so welcome. Thanks for sharing your story with us, Whitney. Zimmerman listeners, if you want to hear more BBB testimonials and learn more about my signature course, go to ZimmermanPodcast.com slash BBB. That's ZimmermanPodcast.com slash BBB. I'll see you next week right here on Zimmerman Podcast. If you loved what you heard today, even if you liked it a lot, you should subscribe and leave a review. We'll see you back here next time in the Zimmerman Podcast.